Hello. Oh, hello, hello, <laughs> hello. Hello there, how are you? Hello, everybody. It's been a month since we were here last. Is it? Yeah, yeah, it has yep, been a month. Been we missed, oh, we, we took a break last uh, two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. We had to, we had to recharge our batteries. Yes, and now we are back and better than ever. Ooh, we are back. Yeah, well, we're That's back. That's for we're sure. Back. <laughs> half, half that statement is definitely true. <laughs> um, the nice thing is that in the break that we had, yes, it really gave us an opportunity to make sure that we were thoroughly prepared yes, for we were, this week's yes. uh, event. We were not testing everything right up until 11 a.m. Definitely not. And uh, everything was working perfectly. Oh. And uh, luckily, we're also complete experts in the Chromebook. Yes. So we expect everything to go perfectly well today. Yeah. Uh, Google keeps calling me to work for them. <laughs> and I said, I'm sorry. I have Tech Talk Lives to do. I cannot come <laughs> and work for you. It is uh, May 27th. 2021. It is Thursday. Mm -hmm. 2021. It is. And um, it is Tech Talk Live. And uh, my name is Luke. I'm Corey. Uh, we are assistive technology specialists here at Vision Forward in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That's true. And today we're going to be talking about the Chromebook. Now, do you know what they call the Chromebook in Germany, Corey? No. They call it the Chromebook. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Was that your joke for the day? <laughs> I guess, I think. I guess that, that's as good as it gets. Yes, that's where we're going. I'm thinking we might uh, pass on the... <laughs> joke corner hour today yeah sadly we we do not have a prepared uh, joke for today but we do recommend uh use the chat feature uh mm -hmm. we love interaction so we please do. use the chat with any questions you have but also why don't you throw in your your best clean joke yes. um and help us out here because uh we could we could use <laughs> we could, we use, could use some, we could use a little help we could use some humor this morning yeah i think so yes we could I hope everybody is having a wonderful day and weekend. Uh, has got lots of exciting plans for Memorial Day. This yeah, weekend. vacation weekend coming up. Three-day yep. weekend for most people. Yeah, it should be rather pleasant. The weather is looking quite nice I here. Know. I'm excited. Yeah, so that should be Pools good. Pools open at my house. Oh, very nice. Roll. Everybody's invited. We'll be uh, putting yeah. the address in the chat. Yeah, I'm going to dock myself and put, yep. put uh, dock <laughs> myself and put my address out for everyone to come to. Feel free to turn up any time of the day or night. Yeah, and Corey will be happy to accommodate you. I'm sure. These sessions are uh, ACVREP. Um, what's the word I want to say? Um, Qualif? Or, no, that's not. I was going to say authorized, but uh, that's uh, not correct. Yeah. Anyways, you can get ACVREP uh, continuing education credits as usual, yes, joining do. our Tech Talk Lives. All the information that you need, including links to the forms that you need to fill out, are at vision dash forward dot org slash ace no <laughs> <laughs> vision dash forward dot org slash tech talk live all right so allow me to at acvrup on my brain but um vision dash forward dot org slash tech talk live there you will find all the links you need for the acvrep credits including the uh form that will ask for an opening and closing code and today's opening code is oh hold on hold on hold on let's uh, calm it down here okay okay yeah, yeah. today's uh, drum roll i actually don't yeah hopefully it's this one here okay drum roll please today's opening code is search and uh, yeah i didn't manage to get it up on the screen that's right <laughs> search we'll put it in the chat hey we got it we got it <laughs> Woo. there we go opening today's code opening is code is search for acvrep again vision dashboard.org slash tech talk live besides acvrep you can also find resource guides for our past uh tech talk live and for this one. Oh, really mm -hmm. oh my gosh you are totally on top of things tech uh, vision dashboard.org slash tech talk live you can find resource guides for our past tech talk lives including this one today yes with a number of of uh just some helpful tips resources and keyboard shortcuts things depending on uh the topics we're covering so head over to uh, any information you want about tech talk live is at vision forward.org slash tech talk live indeed it is including our ages our favorite food yes favorite color uh place of birth and uh a link to my amazon wish list <laughs> so you can uh, buy me things and send it do you have an only fans page or? i do not have okay page. maybe that's the next step <laughs> yeah, well, i think we'll hold off on that we do have uh, some jokes here oh, good, in the good, chat good. already so right, let's we'll, do our uh, joke uh, corner hour here we go joke corner um i'm not sure who sent this one because i don't see your name so apologies okay. but it says 
from the Braille list, which cheese is made backwards? Cheese. But we don't actually have an answer, I don't think. Oh, geez, so if anybody knows... Of... Oh, wait a minute. Swiss? Oh, wait, wait, we just got the answer. It was, uh, looks like it was margarita, I think. Um, Edam. You get it? Made backwards. Oh, hey, made backwards. that's clever. Nice, that's pretty good. All right, from Kenneth, we have, what do you call a shoe made out of a banana? A split toe. You're on the right split, path. Split, yeah, you're on the banana, right path. Peel. No, I'm going to tell you. Heel. A slipper. Slipper. Hey, hey, hey. I like it. I like that's it. Pretty good. And uh, from Susan, we have uh, a family favorite joke, apparently. Oh, okay. How mm -hmm. do you fix a broken pizza? Oh, I, uh, I don't know. Tomato paste. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. I love pizza. Uh, favorite food. So thanks for coming to Tech Talk Live, and now we're going to yeah. go eat some pizza. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that was the highlight of the hour. <laughs> it, was the, it was the joke corner here. Uh, yes, indeed. Oh, we got another one. These Ooh, are the jokes do, are just right, flooding in today. Let's do one more. Okay. Maybe we'll sprinkle some in later. But I feel like more. we could basically do a whole hour we of jokes. Whole, this, maybe our next space. time will be, yeah. yeah. Uh, from Lynn, yeah. what do you call a snail on a ship? Uh, sh I don't know. A snailer. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> All right, well, that was fun. Pretty good. Pretty good. All right. You know what else is pretty good? Go on. The accessibility features provided by Chrome Holy and the cow. Chrome OS that you find on Chromebook. That was one of the finest segues is I've that ever not, heard. I have, you, while we were off for two weeks, I was mm -hmm, taking broadcasting segues. classes <laughs> and learned about segways. Excellent. And riding segways around. All right, so yes, as you might have guessed already, we are talking about Chromebook today, or as the Germans call it, Chromebook. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm going to be looking at some of the low vision accessibility options, and Corey will be taking a look at the Chromevox, which is the Chromebook screen reader. And uh, we are somewhat ill-prepared for this, although through no fault of our own. I don't own. know if that's tr true. Okay, well, in that case, everything's going to go perfectly. Well, and, okay. uh, oh, things going pro, that I can't, <laughs> that I can't promise. Um, but yes, without further ado, let us switch over to our Chromebook. Let's uh, go ahead and switch our scene here. Excellent. Oh, you know what? We are... <laughs> Sadly, we are not visible in this scene. So oh, that's okay. You will be able to hear us, but not to see us. You don't need to see us. You yeah, need you to focus to on the Chromebook us. anyway. Exactly. Let me turn off this particular thing here. Oh, okay. Good. Okay. So we have the Chromebook in front of us. And uh, the Chromebook, for those of you who do not know, they're basically simple laptops which uh, are running the Chrome OS operating system from Google. And the idea with these laptops is that they can be made cheaply because they do not um, have programs installed directly on them. Instead, they access programs through the cloud. And the nice thing about that is that it saves your computer from having to have you know, a high quality processor or a lot of uh, onboard memory and things like that because everything's being done on the cloud, i.e. on the internet. And with that being said, Chromebooks can be picked up pretty cheaply. You can probably get one as cheap as like 150 bucks or something like that. Yeah, some. I mean, depending on you know the nice ones, you can you can be well into the seven eight hundred dollar range yeah, yeah, for some yeah. of those really nice screen ones. But yeah. a, a decent one, yeah, you're right, you, a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, so they're they're not uh, too much of an mm -hmm. investment. And of course, they can access all of those. Uh, nice Google um, bits of software. So you've got the Google Classroom stuff and Google Drive and Google Docs yeah, and right. uh, yeah, Google everything basically. Yep. Um, so it's Google all the way. So they're basically web browsing machines is essentially kind of uh, uh, what they're going for. Um, but they do have some nice accessibility built in and uh, we're going to take a look at some of that at the moment. Uh, so let's go ahead and we're going to open up our, um, our settings menu. Now, there's a couple of ways to do this. Uh, I used the shortcut Shift-Alt-S just then. And if uh, I didn't want to do that, I could use my mouse and click on the bottom right-hand side um, of the screen where we see like the time and the battery level and the Wi-Fi connectivity and things like that. And that will also bring up my settings menu. And from here, we have uh, various different options, including the ability to change the volume, um, to turn on and off night light, which I think is quite a nice uh, feature if your eyes get tired. Um, it, even just regardless of whether you use it at night or not, it helps to cut down on the blue light being emitted by the screen. And I actually find it's nice to have it engaged all the time, uh, just because I find it more relaxing on the eyes. Um, so we can turn that on and off. 
And uh, we can uh, change our um, uh, internet settings and things like that, turn on and off Bluetooth. But we can also access accessibility, and that's what we're interested in here. So we do have a couple of ways to do this. There is an accessibility uh, icon that we can see on, uh, in the settings menu here. And so we can click on that, and it will open up um, some accessibility settings. But this isn't all of the settings. This is kind of probably the most used ones. If we want to access all of the settings, there is a cogwheel at the top of the menu here. And that will take us through to a place where we can view all of the accessibility settings. So it's kind of like we have like a quick access menu by clicking on the accessibility icon here. Or we can view all of the settings by clicking on the cogwheel. So let's go ahead and click on the cogwheel for the moment. And once we've done that, we uh, bring up a page here with various settings. And we have an option that says Advanced on the left side. So we're going to click on Advanced. And we're going to go down to where it says Accessibility. And we will, uh, uh, we will open up some accessibility options. And then we have to click on where it says Manage Accessibility Features. And that's going to bring up all of our accessibility options. So there's a few different kind of clicks we have to do there. Um, but it's not uh, too difficult as long as you know what, what you're doing. Now, from here, we're basically in a list of different accessibility options. And there are a number of things that we can do. So let's take a look at some of these. Our first option here is ChromeVox to enable ChromeVox. And this is what Corey is going to be taking a look at today. ChromeVox is um, the built-in screen reader for uh, Chromebooks. And uh, you can also use ChromeVox within the Google Chrome browser, um, even if you're just using a PC or mm -hmm. uh, a Mac as well. Um, you can use ChromeVox within the Chrome browser. So if you don't have a screen reader, um, but you need one for internet browsing specifically, then uh, that's quite a nice option to have if you're a user of Google Chrome. We won't bother turning that on at the moment, because Corey's going to show that to you. Um, but uh, it does have some nice, um, it does have some nice options. Um, Lynn, uh, Lynn says that the screen that we're sharing is blurry. Lynn, I apologize. That's a limitation of the technology, uh, unfortunately. So, uh, so yes, you'll just have to listen to my descriptions instead, and uh, hopefully that will. Partially, uh, that's Zoom, zoom, zoom yeah, kind of cuts yeah. the quality on things, unfortunately. Yeah, so uh, yeah, you're going to have to live with that. But we are going to make things bigger as we go along here. So hopefully that will uh, make things a little bit easier for you. Now, the next option in our list is Enable Select to Speak. And uh, with this enabled, we are able to have um, various bits of text read aloud to us, particularly things on the internet. Um, so we could be on a web page. There might be a block of text, you know, whether it's an email or uh, Wikipedia or something like that. We can have those things read aloud to us uh, by our Chromebook, which is nice. So uh, before we do anything, I'm going to actually open up a Wikipedia page here that we can test this in. So we'll go to wikipedia.org. and. Let's uh, go to the English sites here. OK, good. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on Enable Select to Speak here. And at this point, um, we should be able to uh, have text read aloud to us. And so we do get a Select to Speak icon. And we can also use a key command, which is search and S. And the idea is that we select text that we want to be spoken aloud. And then we either click on the icon or use the command search in S. And it should be read aloud to us. So let's give this a try. I'm going to go ahead and select some text here from uh, Wikipedia. And let's try and do a search S, and we'll see what happens here. The 2007 Coca-Cola 600 was the 12th stock car race of the 2007 NASCAR Nextel Cup Series and the 48th iteration of the event in the US. It was held on May 27, 2000. <laughs> All right, yeah. Uh, now, we can slow down the, the voice there. So <laughs> if that was a little bit fast for you, don't worry too much. Hopefully, you could hear that. Um, it was coming through um, the microphone on my, on my lapel here. So hopefully, it was loud enough to hear. If you couldn't hear it, then uh, you'll have to take my word for it that it was <laughs> indeed uh, reading that out I nicely. will confirm. Yes, really yes, Corey can confirm. Yeah, I have, uh, have proof here. Now, one of the cool things we can do with this is we can use uh, keys on the keyboard to start and stop reading and also to skip forward and backward. And so for that, we can use the space bar to start and stop. May 27, 2007, before a crowd of 100. And while it's reading, we can use the left and right arrows to skip backward and forward. 170. The 2007 Coca-Cola So I skipped backward then. It was held on May skip 27. forward then. The 400 lap race Skip forward again. 
and paused. And so right at our fingertips there, we have um, some controls that are easily accessible. Uh, just stop here for a second. Um, so Abigail says, does it read other languages and can you change voices? Uh, the answer to that is yes and yes. Now, I must admit that I have not tried other languages, but I know that they're available. And we are going to take a look at that um, in just a second once we've finished with this here. So we were having the, um, the text read aloud to us from the web page. And we also have a visual control panel, if uh, that's something. So if we have a print disability, but not necessarily um, you know, low vision, um, we might want to use the control panel down here from which we have access to uh, skip backwards, skip forward, go to the start, go to the end, um, and also change the reading speed as well as play pause. And so, um, so yes, we do have a control panel. Now we can actually in the settings turn off that control panel if we don't want that to be there. Um, but uh, I don't think it takes up too much room. So, uh, so yeah, not too much of a hassle. Uh, Kenneth says that everybody should complain to Microsoft and or Zoom about uh, the quality of their, <laughs> their image <laughs> transmission. Uh, yeah, sounds like a good idea. I think everybody should email uh, probably Bill Gates directly, right? I think, yeah. Bill, yeah. I think it's uh, bill at microsoft.com. <laughs> it actually, it actually <laughs> might be. I agree. Probably was at one point. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, so uh, that's how our select to speak works. Now, we do have to obviously select the text that we want it to read. And so there is some kind of you know, use of the mouse there and uh, some kind of <coughs> excuse me, visual aspect to that. So it's not going to replace a screen reader or anything. Uh, but for low vision users, it definitely could be pretty useful. Let's have a look underneath where in the menus. I've, I've gone back to the menus here. And underneath where we enabled Select to Speak, we have Select to Speak settings. So let's go ahead and open that up. There's some pretty cool stuff in here. So first of all, we have a drop down menu where we can select a <coughs> voice. Excuse me. And in this uh, menu, we will see that there are a number of different languages. And so we have one that says uh, Bahaza Indonesia. Oh. We have uh, German or Deutsch. Uh, we have Spanish, Espanol. We have French, Francais. We have uh, the Netherlands here, uh, Portuguese from Brazil, by the looks of it. Um, and then various other ones as well. There's quite a lot. And uh, they're either through Chrome OS's own um, text-to-speech engine, or they also have some eSpeak voices. Are you familiar sure. with eSpeak ones? Yeah, that's what NVDA ships were. Oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So probably not the best voices then? It's a, it's, it's a little more computer sounding, yes, yeah, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, but again, there's a number of different languages that we can choose from there. So pretty comprehensive. Now, like I said, I must admit I haven't messed around with these, but um, if you do speak a different language, yeah. we're playing with, I think. And I think one thing to note, unless I'm wrong here, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. Yeah. If you if you choose, let's say French, yes, the text it's not going to convert English text right. into yeah. French. So it's, if you if you're it, reading it, French on the internet, yes, exactly. Then you yeah. want to use yeah. the text to speak yeah. French voice. But if you're reading English, it will just sound like English with a French accent. It's, it's no yeah. translation. Yeah, no translation. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Sometimes yes. that sometimes individuals think, oh, if I switch the voice, right, it'll then be it will about, change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so we also have some options here for the highlighting. Now, those of you who were able to see the screen somewhat may have noticed that as um, the text was being read to us, it was being highlighted at the same time. And for people, again, with print disabilities that aren't necessarily vision loss, but you know, maybe some uh, dyslexia or something like that, mm -hmm. um, some of the highlighting here you know, might be super beneficial. And there's a couple of things that we can do. We can change the highlight color. So I'm going to change it from blue to, let's go for pink, why not? And uh, we can also shade the background content so that what's being read to us is uh, light, but other things are dark. And that can help keep us focused on what's being read. Let's just take a look. I'm going to enable that, and we'll take a look at what it looks like, because um, I think it's kind of cool. So hopefully, let's get back to it. Uh get back to our Wikipedia page here. And you can see, hopefully, um, straight away that we still have this same text focused on, the text that we were reading before. Uh, but now all of the background has been dimmed, and only the text that we were focused on is, um, is kind of light, is bright. And also, uh, the word standard is currently highlighted, and it's highlighted in pink now because we had changed that. Mm -hmm. And if I uh, begin this playing, then we'll see standard that move along. Standard 1.5 miles, 2.4 kilometers, track covers the longest distance of any event on the NASCAR calendar. 
And I'll go ahead and stop it there. Um, so some really nice features. Again, um, these are great for you know for uh, vision loss, but there's further options as well for other print disabilities that I think uh, could be super useful. So if anybody's working with individuals uh, with those uh, kind of issues, then uh, I think there's some nice options here. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go back to our settings menu. I think we have a question in the Q&A. I'm just going to go ahead and pull it up here. Um, oh, thank you. <coughs> yeah. Um, so we have uh, Jim here um, says that we may want to remind people that the search key is in the same location as a caps lock on a standard keyboard. I think that's a good tip because, um, you know, um, Microsoft have got their keyboard, Apple have got their keyboard, yeah. and Google have got their keyboard. And, and with the Google keyboard, we do have this search key, which is, um, as Jim said, where the caps lock key normally would be. And so that's kind of uh, a modifier key, which, uh, which you would use quite a lot on a Chromebook. So yeah. every time you switch to a different operating system, there's always something a little bit different to, to learn, for sure. And we'll definitely be you talking about the search key at, yes. at, when we look at ChromeVox. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, for the select to speak there, I was using search S. And so we were using it at that point. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, I was, I, the search was over by, by the caps lock there. Um, let's just take a look back in our text uh, to speech settings here. Um, so I went back into our menus here and opened up, uh, again, our text-to-speech settings. And there was a link to, uh, to some further settings where we can change rate, pitch, volume, and then we can also preview different voices. Now, Corey, <clears throat> do you know, um, are the different English voices the same voice but pitch changed? Any uh, ideas? No, nope, I don't believe so. Are they different, different voices? Yeah. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Why don't you go in and slow her down just a little bit? Because what I'm curious about is when we move to Chromevox, yeah. that's the same Chromevox voice. So I'm thinking it's the same text to speech. So why don't you slow okay. it down just a little bit? Right. We're going to so go through I, about 70% here. So when I do my demo, we'll yeah. see if it. I don't have to slow it down. Let's hear what it sounds like as well. Yeah. 2007 race was won by Casey Mears. We'll see oh, that, that's the pitch. Started from 16th position. The pitch changed. Which is interesting because I did tell it to change the speed. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, no, wait, no, wait, 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 wait. Sorry. Oh, sorry. No, that's sorry, okay. everybody. It doesn't say it sounded, it sounded just as fast, but a little bit lower. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, everybody, that's what the pitch change sounds like. Uh, here's slow down speed. JJ, Yelly finished second, and Kyle Petty came in third. Oh, we need to speed her up. That's a little slow that yeah. time, but you get the idea yeah. We can uh, how we can adjust uh, the speed there. We'll put it up to 80%. That sounds that we'll good. See how we get on. Um, somebody, uh, Avi again says, uh, says, beside print disabilities, it can also be useful for people learning a language, um, including young readers, uh, English as a second language, oh, sure. uh, students, ESL, et cetera. Yeah, yeah sure. great, a great tip there. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And uh, you know, I've, I've never worked with, um, with the, those types of clients before, but I can definitely see how this stuff could be super useful. Mm -hmm. OK, uh, let's uh, jump back over to our accessibility list here. And let's see uh, what else we have. We have text-to-speech voice settings. Now, I already accessed that um, through um, a different menu, so we don't need to go back into that. But that's where we can change pitch and speed and uh, the voice and all of that stuff. The next option we have is the uh, high contrast mode. Every good computer's got a high contrast mode, and this is no uh, different. We can toggle it on here. I'm going to go ahead and do that, and uh, everything will, all the whites will turn black, and all the, all, <coughs> excuse me, all the blacks will turn white. And uh, this again can be quite relaxing on the eyes, and some people see better, you know, with this uh, color scheme. People with RP and, and so on and so forth. And um, we also have a key command that we can use to toggle this on and off, which is Search Control H. And I think it's important to learn the key command because. Oftentimes, you will want to switch between the high contrast mode and the not high contrast mode because it's not a smart invert, which means that it does uh, change all of the colors of everything, including pictures. Um, As a little side note, when I, I did a presentation on the Chromebook not too long ago, and one of the participants recommended there is a a, a, Google, a Chrome extension. extension. Yes. And that yes. one, uh, I believe it's called High Contrast. I, I, I think if you do a search under the extensions, you'll find it. But yep. that one obviously is only going to work in Chrome, but from my understanding, it does do the smart inversion. Yes, it does. Yeah, okay. that, that's very true. Um, but that will only work within your Chrome browser. Correct. So if you, need yeah. a, if you need a high contrast across the whole computer, um, you've got this high yeah. contrast mode here. Let's just see how it affects a picture. I brought up a picture here in uh, the Chrome browser. We're going to turn on the high contrast. And it's asking us if we're sure we want to turn it on. I'll hit Enter to confirm. And the pictures just completely change colors there. And so, um, so yeah, it's not, uh, it's not perfect. And I don't know really why they don't have a smart invert just built in there. Yeah, but, uh, hopefully they'll, I mean, yeah, I'm yeah, not sure you know, either. 
yeah, one of these days I might upgrade that. Uh, but yeah, I would definitely recommend learning the keyboard shortcut so you can easily turn that on and off. Search sure. Control H. Okay, next, the magnifier. Everybody needs a magnifier, and we have two options. We have a full screen and a docked magnifier. And again, we can turn those on or off in the settings here, um, or in the quick settings as well. If we opened our um, settings menu and went to the quick settings, we can turn uh, them on and off from there. But we can also, of course, use keyboard shortcuts here, and I would strongly recommend memorizing those if, um, if you do need the, the magnification. So for the full screen magnifier, our key command is going to be search control M, mm -hmm. M for magnifier. And it's asking uh, if we want to turn on the full screen magnifier. So we'll hit enter to confirm. And now we have zoomed in. And uh, obviously, this is going to operate very similarly to, uh, to magnifiers on other computers. As we uh, zoom in, the field of view is reduced. And so we need to start to pan around the screen to see everything. And in order to do that, we just push the mouse in the direction that we want to pan. And it will allow us to pan around. However, we do have another option, um, which is holding down Control and Alt and using the arrow keys. And we can pan around like that as well. Now, I'm not sure if this is possible on on the Windows magnifier. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but for some, they may, may find it conceptually easier um, to, to kind of get that. Because some people do struggle panning with the mouse, mm -hmm. for sure. Yep. And um, so I do like the fact that this is, this is included. So uh, Control, Alt, arrow keys, and we can scroll in all directions. So nice feature. Uh, to zoom in and out, we can do Control, Alt, and two fingers on the uh, touchpad. And uh, that will allow us to zoom in and out. Um, by, by default, the zoom works in the opposite way to what I would expect. So in order to zoom in, you hold Control, Alt, Alt and pull two fingers toward you. Oh, and I, that I makes things think, larger. Yeah, I, like, I would think it would be the opposite. Yeah, exactly. You would think yeah. it would be the opposite. Um, but you can actually change that in the settings if you want it to operate the other way around. Oh, cool. um, so yeah, so we do have an option there. But yeah, very quick to zoom in and out. Now, if you have a touch screen, um, like we do, a touch screen Chromebook, then we can actually just use our pinch gestures, pinch and reverse pinch. And then we can pan as well um, by using two fingers to, uh, to move around the screen. So, um, so that's always nice. Um, I do like using this device uh, with the touch screen because um, it does make it you know, pretty easy to use. Um, so definitely a fan of, of that feature. Uh, but not all of these have touch screens. So if you want that, make sure you buy the Chromebook with the touch screen. Um, what else do we need to do with that? There is, I don't think we need to do too much else with the full screen magnifier, mm. but there is an option here to set the zoom level when you zoom in. And so you could set the zoom level to two times, four times, six times, so, eight times, so ten times. So when you turn on magnifier, it exactly. goes right to that one. Yeah, okay. so when you turn on the magnifier, it'll go right to that magnification level. Um, so, you know, um, again, for some people who just want it as easy as possible, you could find that magnification level. The, the tricky thing is that everything is different sizes, so there's usually not one magnification yeah, sure. level that works for everything, uh, but it's a place to start at least. OK, the docked magnifier is next. Let me just find that here. So we can enable docked magnifier um, using the switch here, but we can also uh, use our shortcut, search control D. And it's asking us if we want to turn on the docked mag magnifier. We'll hit Enter. OK, so we've turned on the docked magnifier. I actually got told off uh, last time or yeah. sometime recently when we did one of these. We did the it, Windows one. Yeah, because yeah. I said that I don't know anybody who uses a docked magnifier. There um, was one. Yeah, of course. Somebody, there was so, one. Somebody came back and said, well, I use it all the time. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, for those who like it, the docked magnifier, we have the magnifier. At the top of the screen, it's docked. It uh, takes up a vertical portion at the top of the screen. And at the bottom of the screen is regular size. Anything that we move our mouse over at the bottom of the screen is shown up magnified at the top of the screen. And we can still use those same keyboard shortcuts to zoom in and out. Um, so Control and Alt and two fingers on the, on the touchpad would change the, uh, change the magnification level. So um, yeah, for those who want it, it's there. It's not my, uh, my favorite thing, but, uh, but it is available. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to judge, you know? No, each, no each to their own. This is a judge-free zone. <laughs> Uh, but you might, well, you probably can't notice, unfortunately, with our video here because um, it is a bit blurry anyway. But as we zoom in, it does get a little bit blurry, which is pretty common with magnification apps. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't say it's uh, got as good technology in terms of magnification as a third party software um, that um, you know, can tend to smooth out the image a bit as you zoom in. Uh, but it's certainly serviceable. I think it's, uh, it's going to be very usable for, for a lot of people. All right, now here's where things are going to get interesting. I hope this is going to work. 
Uh, the next option that we have in our accessibility menu is to adjust our screen resolution. And adjusting that can make everything bigger. So it can definitely be beneficial. I'm hoping it's not going to mess up our... I probably feed, wouldn't yeah. do it because okay, it's got to match. OK, fine. They've got to match. So I'm, not gonna, okay, I'm not going to show you this, but I will open up the setting just to show you what it looks, in, looks like. And we basically have an option that says display size. And there's a slider. On the left of the slider, it says small. On the right of the slider, it says large. Um, can you guess what happens if you slide the slider to the right, Corey? Yes, it gets um, smaller. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> uh, and that's why you're the boss. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, as we slide the slider to the right, everything will get bigger. And the nice thing about this is it enlarges everything. So the, uh, the bar at the bottom of the screen, which um, has access to the different programs and the settings and stuff, all of that will get larger. When windows open, um, they will be larger. Everything is larger. It's, uh, if you can do that, it's probably better than using the magnifier because you don't have to pan around mm -hmm. when you zoom in. If everything is big enough just by increasing the, uh, the resolution or decreasing the resolution, um, then um, that's great. So definitely yeah. worth playing around, uh, around with that option. But yes, we will not do it at the moment, just in case <laughs> we break everything. OK, uh, underneath the option to change the resolution, we have the option to um, uh, change our text size. And so we can change the font size of like the menus in the Chromebook and things like that. Let's go ahead and set that to very large here. And so everything uh, just got larger. I'll go ahead and leave it like this because it's probably easier for you guys to, to read stuff like this. And so we're able to, uh, to make that larger and smaller. And we can also, and this is kind of cool, we can also customize the font as well. And so there is um, uh, both a slider for font size so we can go ahead and change, you know, make the font even larger here. But we can also change the actual type of the, 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 the type of the font as well. And so there's various different ones to choose from, and there's drop-down lists that we can, uh, we can use to select a font type. I won't bother changing any of that at the moment, but uh, certainly if you find the fonts there, like the, the letters are running together or you know, whatever, it's hard to read for some reason, you can play around with that and hopefully find something that, uh, that works a little bit better for you. And again, I don't know. I don't know if that's uh, something which is available in Windows. I'm not sure. Yeah, there's text size. Uh, no, but I'm talking about the font type, though. Oh no, I don't yeah. think you. Maybe there is. I'm not, I'm not sure. Good call. I don't yeah. think. I don't. I've no, I don't know that I've ever seen it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Uh, let's go back to our menu here. Go ahead and go to there. Let's see what else we have here. Um, OK, I don't want to spend too much longer because I know Corey's got to get hit his bit in as well. Yes. So let's just run through a few of these things here. We do have dictation. And uh, we do have to be connected to the internet in order for this to work. Again, there is a slider that we can use to enable it in our accessibility settings. And uh, there's a keyboard shortcut that we can use to uh, start and stop dictation. And that is search and D. And so when we hit that, we'll hear a little chime to let us know that it's listening. We can dictate and hit search and D when we finish to stop dictation. And um, it tends to work really well. But do bear in mind, you do have to be connected to the internet. So that's something, uh, something that isn't always the case. But here it is. Let's give it a try. It will work in any text field. So at the moment, I'm in a search box at the top of my accessibility settings. I'm going to hit search and D and dictate it something. Hello, everybody. I hope you're having a wonderful day. And I'll stop it there. Now, I don't know if you guys can read that, but it does indeed say, hello, everybody. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Oh, and so good. it works pretty good. And because laptops have got uh, microphones built in, you don't need a separate microphone or anything. But do bear in mind, of course, if you're in a loud room, that it's going to mm -hmm. try and you know, pick up uh, everything that it can hear. And so things can get kind of crazy. So yeah. <laughs> you do have to do USB headset. Exactly, yeah. Like At that point, you might want to use a, a USB headset. And if I'm not mistaken, dictation does not work with Chromevox turned on. OK, fair enough. Yep. Yeah. If, I, if I remember, we've tried. And I think looking it up, I'm pretty sure it does currently does not work with Chromevox. But if somebody's had better luck, just let us know in the, in the chat. Yeah, that seems like a bit of a shame. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, a couple more things here. We have an option for a large mouse uh, pointer, or large mouse cursor, as they call it. We have a slider that we can use to adjust the size from small to large. And we can also change the color. So very similar to uh, the Windows accessibility. Um, in this regard. So let's change this to red. Why not? There we go. So now we have a nice large red 
uh, pointer. And we also have a switch that we can turn on to highlight the pointer as we move it. So every time we move it, we will get like a red circle uh, or whatever color the mouse pointer is. That will be the co color of the circle. And it will kind of appear as we move the pointer and give us a bit more of a visual indicator um, as to where that pointer is. So that's, uh, that's a nice little... Um, a nice little option there. And we actually have the same option for the typing cursor as well. And so we can uh, have something turned on. So as we are typing, each time the cursor moves, it will be highlighted for a second to help us uh, locate it. All right. Wonderful. That was all quite exciting, wasn't it? It really was. It really was. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, in conclusion for the low vision stuff, um, it's pretty comprehensive. It's pretty easy. And um, it uh, doesn't cause any lag or you yeah. know any any kind Crashing. of problems yeah. with the with the operation of the computer. So uh, yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's uh, it's, it's definitely going to be useful for a lot of people. Good. All right, are you ready? I'm born ready. All right. Well, in that case, I'm going to enable Chromebox here. Oh, don't. No, you can. You don't want me to do that? Chromebox That's okay. No, it's on now. <laughs> That's right. We'll talk about it. Coming back your way. Okay. All right, let's do Link, you know, close this Setting. for a moment here. Select to speak. Well, okay, good. Site information. Let's just make sure we're loud Button, enough. Volume, so slider, 100%. Okay. Now, first Button. and foremost, I want to apologize that um, Chromevox is, is going to be coming through a, my microphone. Uh, unfortunately, we had really bad sound quality press trying to put it through the, the mixer. Uh, so we're going to do this instead, so bear with us. The other thing I want to say, too, and this is where I really like some of our experts, if we have any uh, connected, uh, although I've used Chromevox on this Chromebook, I'm, I don't, I'm not a daily user of it, so I'm definitely not an expert when it comes to using Chromevox. I think in order to really understand and be good at something, you need to really use it and dig, dig into it. So... Um, like any screen reader, there's so many keyboard commands and shortcuts to memorize. And um, there are definitely, through this demo here today, we're really going to just be looking at the basics of Chromevox, getting an idea of what it's capable of. And I may do something a little different. Uh, so again, please use the chat to, to correct me or tell me that I'm a dummy. I, I do not mind. I will not be offended. So first and foremost, as Luke said at the top of the program here, Chromevox is the screen reader that's provided by uh, Chrome uh, OS. So if you're familiar with JAWS or NVDA or Narrator on the Windows side or VoiceOver for Mac and iOS, then you're familiar with what a screen reader is. And that's what Chromevox is here on the Chrome OS. When Luke handed over to me, uh, he turned on Chromevox for us and he did it with a quick keyboard command. So you are able to turn on and off Chromevox very quickly with a keyboard command, which is Control-Alt-Z. So because I have it on now, if I do a Control-Alt-Z, it'll turn it off. We got a little ding-ding noise. And if we do it again, Chromebox we get Chromebox on again. Window. Now, I'm having a weird Chrome issue where I hit Control, and it's not making it be quiet. But let's see if hopefully... Uh, it'll work this time for us. But there are some settings uh, under the accessibility menu that Luke was under specifically for Chromevox. So let's go first, take a look at that. And I'm going to do that by heading over to my settings. Now, before Luke did talked about that keyboard command, that Alt-Shift-S, and I'm going to do that now. Quick settings. Press search plus left to access the notification center. And I'm going to go ahead and use my Chromevox navigation, which is using the search key. And again, that's right to the left of the A or where the caps lock would be. That's our Chromevox modifier. Most things that we need to do with Chromevox is going to require that modifier key. I'm going to hold it down and use my right arrow to move. Um, very similar to you would do with voiceover, uh, both on iOS and the Mac. So I'm going to go ahead and hold it down my search key or my Chromevox key and hit right arrow until I get to settings. Corey Ballard, sign out, shut down, lock, settings. There we go. I'll go ahead and hit search space bar Press or Chromevox settings. space. Search settings, search. Banner. And we've got in, we got into search. our search here. Network. Now what Link. I'm going to do Link. is Link. I could use Navigation. the search um, uh, bar and type accessibility. Man, I wish I could be, make it be quiet. <laughs> Um, 
I could use the search bar uh, that we landed in, but instead I'm going to use a, uh, a, a, a another Chromevox key to get quickly to the accessibility part here. Now I could use my Chromevox right arrow and just move from option to option to option to option, but I know that Chromevox breaks up their settings by heading. So I'm going to use the Chromevox key, Chromevox H to move by heading, and we're going to look for advanced. Network, Bluetooth, connected people, device, personalization, search and apps, advanced. There we go. Collapse, we're going to go ahead and button, open that up with a two. search space bar. Advanced. Expanded, and now we're going to use our headings again to move for accessibility. Search, and top, privacy, language, files, print and develop accessibility. There it is. Heading two. Now go ahead and do search right arrow and find the manage accessibility options. Get image description. Always show ex manage accessibility there we go. features. We'll activate it with a Chromebox space. Manage accessibility features sub page back button. Click to Good. navigate away. So now we're in that same settings that we were in features. before. Heading one. This time we're looking for the text to speech options. Enable access text to speech. Here we go. Heading two. We'll keep going to the right. Enable Chrome box spoken feedback toggle button. And we've press. got that toggle button pressed already. That'll press turn Chrome box on toggle. or off. We're going to go one more to the right. Open Chrome box settings. There we go. We'll Link. do our Chrome box space. Chrome box options. Chromevox options. And now let's take a look at what we have here in our Chromevox options. I'm going to move over again using my Chromevox right. Chromevox option. Enable verbose descriptions. Checkbox. Check. So our first option here is enable. Search plus space to toggle. We have enable verbose descriptions. Now what this is, if you're familiar with iOS hints, this is their terminology for hints. So what I want to show you is when I move off of this checkbox and come back, it's going to say enable verbose descriptions and then it'll say checkbox checked. And at the end of it, it gives you a little hint. It'll say hit, uh, hit Chromebox space to activate. Automa enable verbose descriptions, checkbox, check. Press search plus space to toggle. So there's our, says press search plus space to toggle. That's that little hint. Let's uncheck this verbose description. Enable verbose descriptions. And now let's move off Automatic. and on and see what Enable it says. Enable verbose descriptions, not checked. Now that it's unchecked, we're not getting those, those verbose description, those hints. So it's a very good feature to have on as you're just beginning to learn uh, Chromevox because it, again, it's gonna give you a hint and let you know how to interact with whatever you've landed on. But once you become an expert and you're really cruising around, a lot of those hints can get quite annoying, but we're going to put it back on with a search space. Enable and let's move on and see our next one. Automatically read page after it finishes loading. Checkbox. Not check. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Press search plus space to toggle. What that's going to do is when we load a page in Google Chrome, it will automatically start reading that page if it's checked. I have it unchecked because I don't like it to immediately start reading. Speak text under the mouse. Checkbox, not checked. If you are a sighted user or you're supporting somebody who is a Chromevox user, you can turn this feature on so that as you move the mouse around, whatever the mouse pointer lands on will be spoken out loud. It can also be helpful for individuals who may be visually impaired if there are some tasks that have to be done with the mouse, having this turned on will read whatever the mouse cursor is rolling over. Use pitch changes. We have used use pitch changes. When we go in here, this will allow us to determine. Change pitch when speaking element types and quoted. There you go. Deleted, bolded, parenthesized, or capitalized text. So we have a checkbox Check. here that's checked and it's saying it's going to change the pitch when it runs into elements that are uh, links or, or bolded or things like that. So it's going to use a different pitch to uh, identify those different elements for you. When reading capitals, increase pitch. Here's another button. increase pitch when reading um, uh, capitals. Collapse. Again, that's pretty similar to uh, any other screen reader so that the pitch will change to let you know that it's a capital letter versus lowercase. Read numbers as words. We have the opportunity button. here to change how as numbers are read. With punctuation echo, sum. 
We can change our punctuation level for none, some, most, or all, just like any other screen reader. As we're doing downloading, we can have those, those notifications spoken out loud to us, the percentage of how far that download is, is gone, what the progress is. Turn off sticky mode when editing text, smart sticky mode. Let's talk about for a, just a quick second what sticky mode is. If it gives us the hint here. So for a lot of times here, I've been using the search key or the Chromebox key to perform um, keyboard commands. Sticky key allows us to turn on the Chromebox key and have it continued to be on without having to hold it down. This is great when you know you're going to be using that search key a lot. For example, what I'm doing right now is a lot of search right arrow, search right arrow, search right arrow. So instead I can have sticky mode on. So then all I have to do is just hit the right arrow because the search key or the Chromebox key is sticky or turned on. The way we turn it on is tapping that, that search key twice quickly. Sticky mode enabled. So I've got it on now. So now I don't have to hold down search key anymore. I can just hit my right arrow, but it's still performing a uh, search right or a Chromebox to right. When playing audio, Play at normal volume even so allows us to duck our audio button. voices heading to and then we can go in and change our voices this is gonna uh, under this heading this will allow us to change who what voice we're using the speech rate and all of that so I'm not going to go into that because that's pretty uh, pretty typical so that's a quick overview of all of the some of the settings under the Chrome Vox menu and really it's one of these menus that you sort of go into once set to your preference, and you typically don't need to come back in here at all. We're all done with this menu here, so we're gonna close our window by using a Control W. That Control W will close a window. Open Chromebox settings. And we'll do one more Control W, and we're back to our desktop now. Now that we've got Chromebox set up and going, let's take a little look at how it sort of works for some normal tasks. Again, today's Goal is not to teach you how to use the Chromebox because, man, we sure don't have enough time to do that. But it's a, 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 just to uh, give you the a, idea of what it's capable of doing. So first, let's take a look at browsing a website. So I want to open up Chrome. I'm going to do that by going to my launch bar, and that's with a Shift-Alt-L. Launcher. And I'm going to go ahead and shell, do a move to the bar, right with my window. search right arrow. Google Chrome. There's Google button, Chrome. And we'll go ahead and hit our search bar, space bar to open created. it up. We've opened up Chrome here. We're in our tab, in our address bar. Let's go to visionforward.org. So we'll go to vision-forward.org. No, 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 yes, you didn't do it. Let's try it again here. Because got sticky one one. You sure is. Oh, Gosh man. darn sticky. I, did, before, I did do that before. You're in your, uh, you're in your search window. period. Yeah, so let's get out of here. Uh, control W. Oh. First, let's turn Sticky it off. Mode enabled. Okay, are we going to get it out here? Oh, oh wait. Address there you go. So I made this mistake, and I do this all the time. I started typing because I thought I was ready to go, but I had sticky keys still on, sticky mode. So rather than typing, it was starting to do all of the different keys I was doing. So I tapped that search, and, uh, search key twice again. I turned off sticky mode. Now let's try it. So we'll type in. W. I hit something there, right? There we go. There let's go. try again. Vision dash forward.org slash tech talk live. Let's go there. I hear that's a great website. One of the best. Yeah. There we go. So we are now at. Let's make sure we are. Window. To yep. Content. We are now at Vision Forward's webpage. And one of the things, if you've uh, joined any of our other Tech Talk Lives focusing on screen reader use on the internet, one of the things that I always teach people and one of the things that I do is whenever I load a new page, I always do a control home on the window side or a search control left arrow on Chromebox to go up to the top of the page. Now I know where I am. I'm not sure if I'm in the middle of the page. I know I'm at the top. Search Control right arrow will take us down to the end of the page. So we're on Vision Forward's Tech Talk Live page here. We want to move by heading because we use headings on our page. I'm going to hold down my search key or my Chromebox key and hit H for heading. 
Tech Talk Live. There we go. One. Landed on our heading, so I skipped all that stuff in the beginning. And then I'll go ahead and use my search or Chromebox key right arrow and begin looking at some of the text here. Join us every other Thursday at 11 a.m. CST for Tech Talk Live schedule. Heading to okay, there's that. May 27, Ooh, 21. That's today. Yeah. Oh my gosh, what's, what's going happening? on today? Let's find out. Chromebook accessibility. Oh, oh. This session, I can't wait to join Corey and learn and something. <laughs> the 10th of June what are we doing on the 10th? I have no idea. I should like... connect. Uh, oh, and we missed that one. Oh. Guide Connect. Yeah, that, uh, I don't think what's we're doing the next? We? Uh, well, what's after the 27th? Is it the 10th? Yeah, Actually, I believe that's the next one. We yeah. have a special guest from SuperSense. We do. Well, we'll talk about that, but let's keep moving. Register for Tech Talk so Live. Got to so, as you can see, I'm moving through the Press different pages here. Now, one of the things I want to point out with Chromebox that I really like. One of the things, you know, most screen readers, it's all these hundreds of keyboard commands you need to remember. Mm -hmm. And JAWS has a little uh, JAWS search command feature to try to help you with that. But Chrome has a Chromevox menu that, uh, that offers you the ability to look and find all of the different um, commands you'd want to do. So let's go to the top of the page here for a moment. Skip to main content. And let's say I want to move by heading or I want to perform some tasks, but I can't remember what the keyboard command is. All I need to remember is Chromevox period or search period in order to open up this Chromevox menu. So let's do that. Search the menus. Search. Oh. And now search I've got a menus. number of different menus See that have popped up and under each menu has a number of different right options. So let's use our right arrow. Jump menu. Go to beginning of table search plus alt plus shift plus left arrow. So first we land on a menu jump item. menu One here. The jump menu allows us to move press or jump to different places. To For example, if I use my up arrow. Start reading, show tape, show links, show land. Let's see if I can find head, it. Show previous, previous, Maybe it's previous, not under jump. previous similar item search. Previous but you can see we have pre previous arrow, object search. Menu, previous list but search, what it does, plus J, then L, it also gives you the item, keyboard command. So not only can we hit search space or Chromebox space to actually activate that control, it's also giving us the keyboard command so we can start memorizing those as we use them more. Let's use our right arrow and move to another menu. Menu. Here's our speech Announce menu. Current battery status search plus o, then B. So we have menu an option item. here that says uh, say battery, and it tells Press us again, search O, Announce. I think it said search O, A, yeah. or H, yeah. or B, B. O, there B. we go. Search o, then B. So when it says search O, then B, what it's saying is it's, it's telling us to do a layer command. I'm going to hold down my search key, hit O, let go of both, and I'll hit B. Battery and it gives us our battery strength. Battery Again, I could have just hit Chromebox space on there and it would have also done it. Besides these menus, tabs, we menu. are, besides those, then we have a tabs line, menu so we can hop active. around between any menu open tabs item. we have. Menu. We have a Chromebox open menu, so these are going to be specific options to Chromebox. Actions, actions but I'm looking Click for headings. headings. Menu. There we go. So here now we have a list of all of the headings that are currently on this page. I'm interested in the ACVREP resources heading. Let's find that with the down arrow. Schedule heading to Tech Talk Live resources heading ACVREP. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and hit my search space. ACVREP continuing education credits. And it's moved me right to that heading on this web page. So again, if I forgot what some of these commands are, if you just remember Chromevox or your search key, period, you're able to perform all, well, not all, but almost all of the different Chromevox keys uh, and commands that you might be interested in. And it's a fantastic teaching tool because it gives you all those shortcuts as well. So, exactly. you know, you go in there enough times and hear that shortcut enough times and eventually it's, yep. it's going to be uh, ingrained in your memory and you won't even need to go to that menu anymore. You can just use the shortcut. You got it. It's mm -hmm. absolutely going to click with you. Yep. Now let's take a look real quick too about uh, m using some other shortcuts to move around. Uh, so we're going to do a control W and close Use the Chrome window. I'm going to go to my launch bar again with a shift alt L. I'm going to move over to YouTube. Google, Chrome, Gmail, 
Docs, YouTube. We'll hit space there. Content. Our Chromevox space. We've opened up a YouTube page. YouTube. I'm going to go up to the top. Guide. Now I'm on YouTube and I'm looking press. for a search field. Yeah. I know it's an edit box. So press I'm going to do my to search E or my Chromevox E to move by edit. Search. And there edit we go. Text. I jumped right to the edit Form. box and skipped search. all the other stuff at the top of YouTube. Search. I'm going to do my search. In, search. Focus. in focus technology technology uh, low low. Vision. vision let's see if that brings us up and we'll hit enter search filters and now i want to move by heading so i'm going to just do my chromevox or search banner. key h low vision products low visions resolution for latest from in focus oh that's us TikTok live by in focus. hey that's hey. us hey. all right i'm going to hit no i'm going to hit uh Hold on. Space here. Right, is it a good idea TikTok to open it? I'm, I'm yeah, it's not, not going to do anything. Happen. Okay, fine. Yeah, we're going to see what happens. <laughs> You're going to hear us. <laughs> there this we is are. us in the past. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so now, now it's playing <laughs> us. This is crazy. Now I can find the pause Press button search, by using my search B. Guide. Search. Search will create YouTube notification. Almost there. Oh, I went too oh, far. Oh, oh. Let's, do a, let's do a shift. There we go. So I did, I went too far and then Press did a search or Chromevox shift B to move backwards. So again, very similar to Windows and Mac based screen readers, we can use some of those commands Chromevox H or that search H to move by heading, B for button, E for element, and so forth, T for table all those kind of things you're used to. Let me uh, just stop you there, Corey, because yep. we are at the 12 o'clock mark. You got and it. And that means, uh, do you have anything else to show? Or? No, the only other thing was just a little bit in, in, in do Google Docs, but it really is, again, because it's web-based, there's really no difference. The only thing I wanted to mention in the Google Docs, if you're working in Docs, is just using that Alt-F to get up to those menus up there. Yes. And again, that's pretty similar if you're a Windows-based screen reader user yep, as well. for sure. Okay, well, let's give our exit code. Today's exit code for ACBREP. No, I, I got a little intro. Oh, I was going to oh. give you the time. Oh, okay. All right, go give for you it. a second. Go for it. Again, go to vision-forward.org slash tech talk live. Yes. Click your evaluation link. Fill out all fives because we are excellent. And um, you can't tell people what to fill out. Oh, yeah. I'm not supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Never mind. Don't put all. Uh -oh. Wait, no. I don't know. I'm just you need an opening and closing code. Today's closing oh, code is. Engine. Vroom, vroom. No. Not vroom, vroom. Engine. Yes. Engine, engine is our closing code. We'll make sure that gets in the uh, Zoom chat as well, too. Yes, we will. Let me uh, do that here. Uh, exit code. And it, yep. Colon. Oh, no. I spelled code wrong. Now we, now the whole thing is going to Oh, it's all, it's all, man. It's all wrong. I thought you said sir, exit col colon. And exit then, colon, colon. And then I thought colon, you thought, like, I, spe I spelled colon wrong. I'm like, well, why don't you just <laughs> use the colon? <laughs> So um, we do have a comment here. Yeah, please. I would I'd love to read it aloud. I'm afraid I can't see who it's from for some reason, but it says, uh, does it read content that's in embedded links? iOS does not read the content in embedded links in emails. Any ideas about that? I think. Can you, uh, one more time, what was that? Uh, does, does Chromevox read the content in embedded links? I think, like, okay, so there's a problem with Facebook. And I think this is this is the idea oh, where yeah. if somebody embeds a link into the post, yeah. then um, for some reason VoiceOver cannot read that post at all. Um, so, but this I, one was something with email, right? Yeah, but that, so the, this one said uh, iOS doesn't read the content in embedded links in emails. Yeah, I guess so, I'm, I, I would like I need maybe a little more information. Obviously, if somebody puts a link, it reads the link. But if it's an embedded link that is then displaying content, ver so it's like so if you've embedded like a video, yeah, into uh, uh, an email? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. If you've embedded a link that's not, it's not the actual link, but it's showing text. Maybe I, that I was would, uh, sorry. That was from Shirley. So thank yeah, you for Shirley, the question, would, Shirley. Shirley, could you please email infocus at vision-forward.org, and we'll take a little bit more time uh, to get some information from you and, and see if we can help at all. Don't I just want a little clarification. Again, there. in focus at vision. You can never guess what. I just put it in there and spelled forward. it wrong. <laughs> I'm having a bad day today. That's all right. Um, so I think that's pretty much so, everything for today. Um, we do, as you saw, we do have a YouTube channel. Yes, we do. We cruised over to our YouTube channel and we were watching ourselves. That's yes, a little we weird. <laughs> um, but uh, you can head over to youtube.com slash in focus technology. 
We stream these these Tech Talk Lives every Thursday at 11 a.m. Central. Every other Thursday. Every other Thursday. Mm -hmm. And then the every other Thursday, Fridays, yeah. uh, we release a video, uh, a more of a produced video on a specific product. So long and short of it, every week we produce a, a video. Yes, indeed we do, and uh, those are all very enjoyable, and we they already are. have a bunch of them on the channel, so there's a ton yeah. of content there, so if you want to know how to use your Windows computer, if you want to know how to use your Mac, if you want to know about the latest low vision and blindness assistive technology products, you it's can there. find all about it there. We had posted a uh, Google Chromebook low vision video last week, Friday. Yes, we, we did. will be doing a, um, a Chrome Vox video, so for anyone who either didn't, uh, wasn't able to join us today or needs to, uh, a little review, you'll be able to watch those two videos as well, too. Excellent, Monsieur. Um, I, before we go, yeah. we do need to hear about our special guest for yes. this time. Yes, next, next, uh, next Tech Talk Live, so that yeah, would be June time. 10th? Yes. Yeah. June 10th, we have a representative from SuperSense will be joining us. Um, we talked a little bit about SuperSense when we did the low vision and uh, accessibility options, and we looked at it on the Android yes, side. Yes, we did, yes. There's an Android and a uh, iOS iPhone app. For those familiar with um, seeing AI, you could maybe compare it to seeing AI, although I think in many cases it's better. And then they also have their Super LiDAR app. Mm. Uh, for anyone who joined our, um, our Tech Talk Live on seeing AI and the LiDAR feature, they have a similar app that uses the LiDAR on the iPhone 12 Pro and Pro Max series mm -hmm. that allows you to use some 3D uh, kind of distance. It starts to bring distance into the camera, yeah. telling you how far things are away and identifying. So yeah. he will be joining us on June 10th. It will be top notch. Yeah, it's always fun to have guests on. It is. For sure. It's less of us talking. So yeah, exactly. I, there I you go. You guys, we get to take a break. I think you guys will dig it. <laughs> <laughs> and if anybody has any ideas for future shows, then please feel free to get in touch with us at the email address infocus at vision-forward.org and let us know what those might be. Please. Any closing thoughts, Corey? My closing thought today mm -hmm. is you got to get up yeah. Before you can get down. Yes, indeed. And everybody loves getting down when the party's hard. Yes. I have no, <laughs> idea. I have no idea what I just said. <laughs> do you have any closing words? Although, maybe, I, don't want you, I really don't want you to end on that. So do you have any no. closing um, words? Uh, no. May, uh, may everybody live long and prosper. Oh, we'll end with a, with a classic uh, awesome. quote from Spock there. See you it's guys. been fun, guys. Yeah. We'll, see you. we'll see you next time. Bye, all. Our music's not playing. We are very sorry. Uh, I'm happy to sing, or if you guys want to disconnect, that also works too. Bye all.